on today's episode, the cheapest regulator on Amazon versus the stock out of the box, 20 versus 60. Hey, welcome back to Light of Fire Studio. We just got a real quick one today. Um, if you've seen it already, we did a review of the RX Weld Stubby Gas Lens Kit that we purchased on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Maybe it was a bit more. It's probably a bit more now. Uh, that was three months ago, I think. And we're still super impressed with this. This is basically the lens kit we use on all our TIG welding right now. And we just got a brand new WP-17 lift TIG that we're really excited to try because we haven't even got to use it yet. It's been a lot going on. But if you haven't seen the review of this kit, go check it out. It, uh, I don't know, it's standing the test of time and that video's gotten a lot of views already, so we're pretty happy. Um, on that note, we needed a new regulator uh, and we decided that we'd give RX Welds another chance at it. So that's what we have here today. And this one... I mean, it says it's for argon or CO2 gases. Uh, we're actually going to use it for CO2, so that's fine because um, we already have this regulator, which came with our Everlast multiprocess welder, and we're just going to compare these two and just see that there's any difference in quality or functionality, and we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to be comparing our Everlast stock regulator that came with our multiprocess welder to the RX Weld $24 regulator we've got on Amazon. Uh, the box arrived exactly like this. This is how it came. There was no outer packing. And yeah, it looked like it had been beaten all to heck. The old Ace Ventura treatment. Um, the top was open. It was open, wide open like this. I checked everything just to make sure it wasn't smashed to bits before I did the review, of course, but uh, it's really tightly packed in here. Yeah, I could barely get it out. Um, it comes in this big styrofoam housing, which is great. It's probably the only reason it survived. And that's probably how they cut down on cost is just shipping it like that. Open it up. Everything's in plastic. Really well packed. You got some accessories in with it. It's in plastic. Everything was in good shape. Everything looks solid. And I got to say, there is really very little difference between these two. I mean, the RX is a little shinier. Maybe it's a little newer because we've been using that Everlast for a while. Uh, the Everlast one is clearly marked Argon on the flow side of things. Um, but all of this is the same. The dials are different. That's what I'm pointing out here. Um, it just, it reads totally different and uh, I'll go into that in a moment. Okay, so kilogram force per square centimeter or KGF centimeter squared. It's uh, the standard international unit, and it has been superseded by Pascal units at this point, which the new gauge does show those. Uh, it's the metric equivalent of pounds per square inch. So here's an equation to change that to pounds per square inch, and our 90 cubic foot argon tank usually shows around 100 kgf centimeters squared when full, or 1500 psi. And on our new regulator, it looks like it's already been upgraded to the new Pascal units of measurements, and it's a whole different set of readings. And I'm not really familiar with it, so let's go ahead and uh, consult the internet and see what this all means. So here is the new regulator, and here is the equation. The new regulator is already showing KPAs and PSI. So with our 20-pound carbon dioxide tank, we're sitting at roughly about 500 PSI, and that's 4,000 kilopascals. And when we plug that in, it checks out just right. In conclusion, you got your pressure rating, adjust your dial as needed, and the RX regulator already says carbon dioxide on the flow meter, so it must be ready. I really don't see a big difference between these two. Backs are the same. 
The bottoms are identical. The nipples are the same. And there you go. Now, RX came with some hardware, and I'm hopeful that we can just get away with this one piece right here. Because these external gas hoses, like what came with the torch from Yes Welder, they should plug and play directly. See, the hose is identical. But, if you want, you can make your own hose at a preferred length with the parts that came with the RX Weld Kit. So this is the actual hose that came with this Yes Welder MiG 205 DS. This is the hose they sent with it. So it's the one we're going to go ahead and switch over to and use because we were using the one from our Everlast. But it wasn't a very good fit. These nozzles are a bit longer than other welders I'm used to. Um, I might be able to compare this real quick. So this is the one that came with Everlast, and this is the one that came with Yes Welder. It's not a big difference, but you can see that the nipples are just a little bit different. We got a fatter rounder and a slicker kind of... They're just a subtle difference. Anyway, that's why we're going to go ahead and use this one with the welder that sent it. So what you want to do, they don't require any Teflon tape. They claim that they're um, self-tightening. But I've found that sometimes even if they make that claim, you still end up losing a little bit of gas without the Teflon tape. If you don't know what that is, you can pick it up in the plumbing section of the hardware store and just ask somebody, I need some Teflon plumbing tape. They'll fix you right up. We're gonna try without first, see if we get any leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this guy and then we'll get our regulator hooked up and we'll do a little soapy spray test and make sure everything is solid and ready to go. Now, before you make a mistake, if you're going to go from a straight CO2 tank to any regulator in this family, you're going to need this adapter right here. And it's going to step it up from a straight CO2 tank to a 580 argon tank fitting. Check Amazon. This is the exact piece you need right here. Now that we have everything in place, let's hook it up and move on to the next step. All right, so the next test is going to be the old Dawn dish detergent bubble test. This is just a diluted version of Dawn dish detergent. Uh, you don't need full strength. It would get everything kind of gooey so you can water this down. I don't know, do like 10% Dawn, 90% water. I don't know, fiddle around with it. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to make bubbles anywhere there might be a leak in the connection line. Just like you would with any gas setup, propane, whatever. You just want to spray a little bit of soap on all these connections and then turn your main on real slow. Make sure you do it gradually. We've already got ours on. We got pressure at 4,000, which should be 20 pounds of 
CO2. And then you want to check this connection here. You want to check all these connections in here. And you want to check the connection on the welder. So I'm just going to uh, mess with our flow meter right here. Open it up a bit. Get it to our 15 CFH. And then we'll see if we have any soapy bubbles. Just like you would with a flat tire on your bike or car or whatever. You just spray a little soap on there and see if air is leaking. In this case, CO2. Be right back. So... Since this is a whole brand new setup, I went ahead and sprayed it pretty aggressively. I don't see any bubbles at any of my connection points. Those are just suds. No bubbles, no bubbles, no bubbles. Ooh, might have a little guy right here. See that? Even that is just the slightest little bit of CO2 leaking. This connection actually looks pretty good. There are a lot of bubbles, but no active bubbles. Oh, maybe. The aggressive bubbles. Small leaks aren't a big deal, but you don't want to get waste gas because it's expensive. Everything's expensive in this business. So best not to be wasteful. But I'll tell you what, this is looking pretty good. The soap test appears to show a tight connection. All right. So now we're hooked up and we're ready to weld. You could always come back and test these again the next day. Um, but regardless of whatever you do, you want to turn your gas off every night or day or whatever. Whenever you're finished in the shop, just, just for good measure, turn that off. So even if there's the minute little leak somewhere in this system, because there's a solenoid in the welder too that might have a leak, you just want to turn all this off at the end of the day. All right, when you're ready to actually set up and set your CO2, you're gonna to wanna to use this dial to control the flow meter. I've gone ahead and preset it to where I think it should be, but let's pull the trigger and find out. We're looking for about 15 CFH. It's 20, 15, 10 at the bottom. And I think it's set pretty good. So we're shooting right for this middle line. Come on, focus, baby. There we go. All right, let's fire it. So what you want to do is just pull your trigger. Right in between. And I think that's a pretty sweet spot. So we're not too low below 15, and we're not all the way up at 20. And I think that's pretty good. All right, so we have the RX Weld. CO2 argon regulator all set up dedicated to this welder for the year because we feel like we want to put this thing through the ringer and see what it's capable of we're gonna make a lot of cool stuff with this welder and uh, hopefully it's up for the challenge but that's it for the RX weld for now we'll update you in the very new future as we've had a chance to use it see how it holds up see if it functions properly and uh, if it's worth the money, and <laughs> at this price point, uh, I think it's worth the money. Anyway, stay tuned. Cool stuff on the way. Take care. Pretty good.